Hello, hello, and welcome to this little video. I'm going to talk you through here very briefly what to expect from this uh, Motown Soul course, the Intermediate Electric Guitar course. So you might think straight away, why haven't I done a, a rock course or a blues course or, you know, something like that instead? Why Motown Soul? There's hardly, there's not much guitar in, in this genre, actually. Uh, if you dig deeper, you listen to the to the original recordings, it's, it's very little guitar. But there's a very good reason for that. So in, in rock music, you need to play an exact part because rock music is about power. So the drummer and the bass player and, and the guitar player, and sometimes even two guitar players, they need to have worked out exactly what they're doing and then they need to stick to that. So it's kind of like this whole tradition of guitar where you, you go to a tab site and you find out how to play something and then you stick to that. That's not really much learning in that. It's more like a, a memorization game. And that's why I picked this genre instead because in, in Motown soul songs, you can change stuff. So you can play it up here for verse one and then you can play it there for verse two and Maybe the second gig, you can switch that around. It doesn't really matter. You can change the rhythms and extension on chords, and you can add little improvised even licks, and you can really learn about music by playing in this tradition. So we got songs here by, you know, like Aretha Franklin, Marvin Gaye, Sam and Dave, Dusty Springfield even, uh, Stevie Wonder. I mean, Jesus Christ, Stevie Wonder, the best best artist in the world, right? Supremes, Temptations, there's loads and loads of stuff. We start really simply with uh, a Fontella bass track called uh, Rescue Me, which is just four chords, but they're really clever. And um, what we do there is that we take, we learn the fretboard at the same time as we learn that song. So it's A, D, G, and E minor. But we play them in small little fractions of chords with a set rhythm, and we keep improvised how we move around the neck. It's, it's a great way of learning your guitar neck. And then uh, you Can't Hurry Love's got this fantastic uh, uh, rhythm to it where you come early in on the beat and you can, again, you can, you don't have to have a set part. You can have a set rhythm, but the chord shapes can change. So we learn lots from that. Uh, we carry on with Can I Get a Witness, Be My Baby, Soul Man. That's, uh, that's actually a set part uh, that you need to, to learn because it's such an iconic part. And then when I looked into it, it turns out that people who have played that song, even even uh, Steve Cropper, played it differently a bunch of times. So I'll go through all the different variations as well. Uh, we got Money, That's What I Want, which is actually the founder of um, the Motown label who, who wrote that song. It was the first hit they had. Uh, heard it through the grapevine, a fascinating chord progression there. Do some solos as well, Get Ready. Uh, an, another incredible song. We take actually the uh, original Saxon string solos and we learn them on guitar. And we got Son of a Preacher Man by Dusty Springfield, which has no guitar on the original. So we got to invent one. And I'll give you lots of ver variations and versions of how you could play this. And then it's up to you to kind of design your favorite bit. Uh, and then towards the end of the course, we do My Guy, which is slightly more... Uh, uh, extended chords, we play Respect, Aretha Franklin classic, the probably the most recognizable soul song in the world. And we actually learn that uh, frightening sax solo there. Uh, we learn how to play, like how to imitate the uh, backing vocals with the rhythm on the guitar part. And this, there's so much we can learn here. Uh, Jimmy Mack, another extended chord thing, and then finish off with Stevie Wonder's Master Blaster, which is a, a feast in minor pentatonic, really. Uh, so what you really learn here is you learn all your bar chord shapes. There's going to be no problem playing them after you've done all these songs and all the details we go through. Uh, how to add little licks using mainly the minor and major pentatonic. And uh, how to how to keep evolving and develop your part. And that's where, where the, the learning can really begin because you you're not like in a rock song, you're not just learning one part and memorize that and then that's it. You can keep developing these songs as you go along. You play with a band one of these songs and three years later you're probably still changing the part, hopefully. 
because uh, you can change it depending on how big the band is. Is there a horn section or not? What's the keyboard player? Oh, we've got a new keyboard player on this gig. He's playing less than the last one. I'll need to add more. And it's this kind of organic way of thinking that you can... Uh, you, you develop as a guitar player more by playing in this kind of style because it's more flexible. Uh, we don't do many modes and stuff that's going to be in later courses. This is mainly a bar chord pentatonic uh, adventure, really. There's some extended chords and stuff, but we, we really try to hammer home that uh, what can you really do with the minor and major pentatonic. And... How can we learn from these songs? So there's a section in, in the member section here where, uh, where you learn all your chords and all your scales and stuff, and there's exercise for that. But in this course, you learn what to do with them, which is always the problem. That's why oh, everyone always comes uh, to this point where, like, I can play all my scales, but what do I do with them? Well, you've got to study songs and put them to work. And that's what we do in this course, really. So you've got 13 songs here. Uh, you can preview them, just follow the links below, you can see me play the whole thing. I always do it in one take because I got this idea that uh, if I can't do it in one take, how can I expect you to do it, you know? It's about being able to play these songs live with a band that's like drums, bass, keyboards and maybe some horns if you're lucky, you know? Because uh, that's the scenario you're going to be in when you play this with a band. So all, uh, all lessons is eight steps per lesson. All of them have like uh, little practice loops to practice along to. And there's tab for everything. And there's several versions of how you can play a verse and a chorus and a middle eight. And I'll talk you through everything in detail. Uh, so have a look around here. And uh, I hope to see you on the other side.